In the name of Allah, the compassion that the merciful. Ladies and gentlemen, peace be with all of you. On behalf of His Excellency, Professor Dr. Jamal Sanad Swedi, the Director General of the Eminent Center for Strategic Studies and Research, I would like to welcome you this evening to a lecture entitled The Communist Party of China's Ideas on State Governance in the 70 years since the establishment of modern China. This lecture will be given by His Excellency Hu Hiping, member of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China, Secretary of the Communist Party of China's Shanxi Provincial Committee in People's Republic of China. His Excellency Hu Ping's hometown is Lianhe. Uh, his career began in uh, August. He became the member of uh, uh, Sakahoa University in the postgraduate uh, studies and obtained a doctoral degree in, in, engineer, uh, in engineering and a member of uh, several committees in uh, the CBC in China. And he is the Secretary General of uh, Shanxi uh, CBC and also the head of the permanent committee of uh, CBC's. Uh, Committee and the 19th Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party CBC and the representative of the uh, 19th uh, uh, Forum for uh, the party. I call upon His Excellency to give his speech. The floor is yours. Dear uh, friends from the United Arab Emirates, ladies and gentlemen, Good evening to all of you. I am uh, the representative of the Chinese uh, Communist Party and it's an honor to visit uh, the UAE. It's an honor and a pleasure to visit uh, this great country. And this visit uh, it seeks to underpin uh, exchange of ideas and enhancing the strategic uh, uh, comprehensive collaboration between the China and the UAE and in this evening it's an honor to give this uh, lecture at the Emil Center for Strategic Studies and Research and to accept and meet the kind invitation sent by the center and to exchange with the Emirati experts and media representatives and our friends from the different uh, social circles from the UAE exchange ideas and uh, shed light on the uh, Chinese Communist Party's experience uh, since uh, it reached uh, uh, the uh, governance level and uh, began to govern uh, uh, the Chinese China uh, from 17 years ago. And uh, uh, I believe that uh, the uh, Chinese Communist Party is not a strange uh, party for our Emirati friends. As you already know, the Chinese Communist Party is considered the cornerstone of leadership for the uh, Chinese uh, flavor of communism and it is the ruling party in China. The Chinese uh, Communist Party leads everything in China. The uh, total number of uh, the members is more than 90 million members and it has more than 4 million and 600 organizations in the Chinese Communist Party. It was established 98 years ago and uh, this uh, uh, party became the ruling party in China almost 70 years ago and uh, it is the largest uh, ruling party in the world. Uh, many of our foreign friends know that if they want to know about China, you must know about the Chinese Communist Party first. Uh, and if you want to know which trend you, China will be developing or taking, you need to know what the Chinese Communist Party will be doing now. If you want to develop a partnership with China, you must boost collaboration with the Chinese Communist Party. Despite the difference of the political system and the actual life uh, uh, and the different lifestyle between the UAE and China, and as the UAE does not have a political party, there are, abs there are absolutely no obstacles in the way of uh, mutual collaboration between the two countries, between the Republic of China and uh, the UAE. In April, uh, in the year nine, uh, 2017, uh, the member of the Central Committee of uh, the CPC and the head of uh, the Central Committee uh, uh, the uh, head of uh, the United Front of the Communist Party of China, Central Committee of the Communist Party of China, visited uh, the UAE uh, on top of a Chinese delegation where she met uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. Uh, she met His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktoum, uh, Vice President 
Prime Minister ruler of the Emirate of Dubai. And on October 2017, the member of the 19th National Congress of the Communist Party of China, there was a meeting where the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, His Highness the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, sent his congratulations to His Excellency Jinping on the re his re-election as the chairman of the uh, Chinese Communist Party. We will send delegations to visit uh, the UAE and to exchange uh, experiences and ideas and new visions uh, for the uh, Communist uh, Party of China and to enhance collaboration between the two sides. At the beginning of October, last October, the Chinese people celebrated the 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. And uh, at the end of October, our party uh, concluded the fourth full complete round for the 19th Central Committee. F this time uh, I visit uh, the UAE after those uh, important uh, events uh, and uh, I am ready to share with our Emirati friends uh, the uh, Communist Party of China's experience uh, and achievements uh, since uh, it uh, uh, came to power almost 70 years ago. The first scope has to do with the uh, experiences of the Chinese uh, Communist Party over 70 years. This year coincides with the, the 70th anniversary of uh, the establishment of New China and the uh, Chinese uh, Party's uh, uh, inception into uh, the ruling of China. And for 70 years, the uh, Chinese Communist Party led the way to the uh, China, the communist uh, nature, or let's say the communist uh, uh, approach, uh, which has a Chinese flavor and uh, achieved uh, welfare for the uh, Chinese people and uh, made great achievements that attracted uh, the inter international attention on five key points or five key domains. The first of which is improvement of comprehensive national strength of uh, the Republic of China. A new China. Before the uh, establishment of the party, China was extremely poor. The uh, total GDP in the year 1952 was 67.9 billion yuan. But in the year 2010, this figure climbed to 40 trillion yuan and uh, thereby uh, surpassed the, the uh, Japanese GDP and China became the second largest uh, economy in the world and uh, uh, by the year 2018 the total GDP of China reached 13.6 trillion US dollars with uh, an increase of 157 fold compared to this figure in the year 1952 and the average growth rate was 8.1% and the average income per capita in the year 2018 was 9,732 American US dollar, which surpassed its uh, uh, equivalent in medium income countries. Secondly, optimization of economic structure. Over seven decades, the uh, grain production uh, and the cultivation of food increased uh, 4.8 times uh, uh, in the 2018. It doubled 4.8 times to the figure in the year 1949. And uh, China uh, became the 21st uh, uh, leading country worldwide, which has 7% of the total arable land in the world now. China has an output that ranks first and awarded in major types of industrial products under the UN's international standards uh, industrial classification and uh, it surpasses more than 220 types of industrial products uh, and uh, it is moving to the modern uh, and highly advanced uh, mid-level and advanced uh, products and industrial products and the quality and quantity increased and increased more than 40 percentage points compared to the beginning of the 1960s. In addition to the increase of innovation and innovative abilities uh, and our uh, country's ability to develop uh, knowledge and technology and to 
the capabilities increased significantly, especially after the 18th, uh, uh, after the 18th plenary session of the Communist Party of China, where uh, China achieved great achievements uh, to the first manned uh, space mission and exploring the uh, deep ocean exploration and supercomputing and satellite navigation and quantum sciences as well. And in the year 2018, one 0.9 trillion uh, Chinese yuan was dedicated to R&D and scientific tests, which represents 2.1% of the total GDP of uh, China, and thereby surpassing uh, other countries, uh, surpassing 15 countries uh, in the uh, European Union. The fourth uh, achievement is further opening up uh, over seven decades, China's doors of opening up will not be closed and will only open uh, even wider. Uh, additional uh, collaboration with all countries of the world uh, increased, and uh, in the year 2001, China joins hands with the world upon its accession to the World Trade Organization in 2013, and uh, for the, the six years, or uh, well, during the six years since it was proposed uh, through. Uh, the Built and Road Initiative has been actively responded by more than 160 countries and international organizations. And uh, nowadays, the second uh, uh, round of the International uh, Agricultural uh, Exhibition was held in China. And this shows how China is keen on uh, expanding its uh, uh, external relations and foreign relations. The fifth aspect of improvement is improvement of people's lives in China. The as over 70 years, the uh, income per capita in China increased significantly. In the year 2018, the uh, average income reached uh, average income per capita reached 28,000 yuan, uh, which incre and thereby increased by 24.3 times during the past four decades. Uh, and more than 800 million people of China were lifted out of poverty uh, and contributed by reducing global poverty by 70%. Uh, moreover, we established the basic endowment insurance system, which is the largest social welfare system. The basic medical insurance covers more than 900 million people, and the medical insurance covers more than 1.3 uh, billion people. And the next year, all uh, uh, the uh, uh, people living under the poverty line in China will be lifted from extreme poverty. In uh, Shanxi province, uh, where I'm the head of the uh, Chinese uh, uh, Communist Party's uh, 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 Secretary General, I, m a lot of development was achieved and we moved from underdevelopment in Shanxi province uh, and lack of food and uh, uh, basic services to uh, a very rich and uh, a very green uh, province. The total GDP of uh, Shanxi uh, climbed from 1 billion uh, Chinese uh, yuan to 2.4 trillion yuan by the year 2018. And the uh, income per capita in Shanxi province increased more than 700 times, or 700 folds. Now Shanxi has become an important Chinese base for advanced uh, industries, uh, aerospace, and energy and petrochemical industries. Shanxi tops uh, the provinces uh, of China in terms of uh, production of oil and coal, uh, and uh, uh, gases, medical gases. This uh, has also paved the way for uh, welfare in Shanxi and uh, the great uh, rise of the Chinese nation. The international community is keen on finding out uh, the reasons of this success uh, for the CPC's experience in governing the country. We have summarized it uh, in six key points. First, uh, upholding the leadership of the CPC. The history has uh, proven several times that uh, the Chinese uh, Communist Party or the Communist Party of China cannot uh, lead China alone. Uh, therefore, 
it encompassed many people and uh, it was established in the year uh, 1921 and then it united the Chinese people and led the, the different uh, na ethnicities in China to achieve national independence and liberation of uh, the people where it established the uh, Republic of China, the People's Republic of China in the year 1949 and thereby it made a great achievement that was uh, uh, that was impossible for other political powers. It changed the history uh, and the tragic history of uh, the uh, Chinese people for more than one, one century. That's why the Chinese people say, without the CPC, we can never build modern China. The, Chinese, the uh, CPC or the, Ch the Communist people of China led the way for exploring a new path for the people of China and uh, used the, the uh, Chinese flavor of uh, communism and made an orient, uh, orientalist uh, and Eastern, an Eastern uh, miracle, as highlighted by uh, uh, Xi Jinping. The uh, governance of China and uh, is uh, really in the hands of the CPC. It is considered the entire backbone of uh, China and it is the critical element for the unity and progress and prosperity of China for an extended period of time and uh, facing internal and external uh, uh, challenges uh, and development uh, uh, at the social uh, front. In addition to upholding uh, the scientific uh, uh, theory which develops in time, there's the CPC is a central party. It always uh, uh, strikes a balance between pragmatism and uh, uh, Mao Zedong and uh, Xin Jinping theory and the theory of uh, three represents uh, and the scientific outlook on development uh, and Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era where the uh, theoretical uh, concept of uh, uh, socialism with Chinese characteristics uh, paves the way for the development and openness of China to uh, achieve uh, uh, my great milestones, one after another. The CPC en enrolled uh, Xi Jinping's thoughts on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era uh, into the guiding principles of the CPC, where we have to uphold it for a long period of time. Uh, Xi Jinping's uh, ideas are rich and diverse. He provided an answer to the fact that uh, the Ch Socialism with Chinese characteristics will be developed uh, by China and the CPC in the new era and how we are able to develop it and uphold it uh, under the guidance of Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics. Uh, the Chinese people now are taking strides uh, in achieving the millennial objectives and the great progress of the Chinese people uh, where it is considered the Chinese dream. Uh, the third element or the third pillar is upholding that development is the party's top priority in governing and rejuvenating the country. After the establishment of modern China, the CPC exerted great efforts to resuscitate and to revitalize national economy and achieved economic stability over a short period of time. After concentrating on the nation building and development, uh, we uphold uh, uh, the central uh, concept of economic development and uh, we m made it development our top priority. Development is the critical element for solving all problems. Uh, we have succeeded in making great achievements uh, uh, within uh, uh, a few decades uh, and this uh, was never developed, uh, was never achieved by the advanced developed countries in the West. Uh, we achieved this in China and uh, we rely on concentration on building and development, particularly after the 18th national, uh, 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 national session, uh, plenary session for the Central Committee of the Party. And uh, uh, we focused on green coordination, sharing, openness and innovation, where it exerts great efforts to solve uh, the uh, imbalanced development problems and insufficient uh, uh, development uh, process by enhancing and lifting the quality of development uh, and to build uh, China into a great nation and since uh, uh, we need to achieve these objectives before the year 2035 and develop uh, uh, a highly advanced communist country by the mid-century 
uh, by the mid 21st century. We are thereby providing uh, the pathway for developing nations to achieve success uh, and all the other nations that want to achieve development and maintain stability and achieve national independence. The fourth concept is adherence to people-centered development philosophy. Uh, Xi Jinping focused on uh, achieving happiness uh, to the to the people, uh, and that uh, uh, this is part of achieving uh, uh, a better life uh, for uh, uh, working together to achieve people's best interest. And the main criteria for measuring uh, our, the success of our work is uh, in, uh, measuring whether our achievements uh, make the people have a better life or not, uh, make them happy or not, uh, make them welfare for them or not, uh, and protect uh, justice and welfare and uh, happiness for them or not. Uh, that's why this was our main foothold and our main concept uh, to achieve success uh, and to make uh, hap uh, to lift uh, uh, 800 million people from abject poverty. Since the 18th uh, plenary session, the Central Committee for uh, the CPC and its cornerstone are uh, our comrade uh, Xi Jinping, uh, who uh, focuses on the welfare of the people, and uh, he wanted to uh, eradicate poverty and uh, deal uh, with all the challenges uh, facing the Chinese people, uh, so that uh, the outcomes of development uh, would benefit the entire nation and achieve joint welfare for everybody in the nation. Uh, therefore, uh, the uh, people's feeling of happiness and welfare increased significantly. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, China in the year 2020 will have already built a, a great level of welfare for the people of China. And all the people of China will be lifted from poverty uh, very soon. The fifth pillar is persisting and strengthening party building. The key uh, characteristic that uh, makes our party stand apart is that it represents uh, the cornerstone of uh, the benefits and uh, the upholding of the historical value and the historical uh, responsibility for ensuring uh, people's welfare. To ensure that uh, we deliver this message and achieve this objective uh, through the party. And as said in the uh, famous Chinese proverb, uh, you have to be strong uh, to beat and overcome hardships. So the 17th uh, the plenary session for the CPC and boosting its activity and uh, developing it in an unprecedented manner, we stress uh, that uh, the CPC continues to manage its affairs and to manage its members in a very strict and uh, disciplined manner. And we are working on cleaning the political environment within the party and enhancing and refining and facing corruption and holding all corrupt people relentlessly responsible for their offenses. And that's why our party is focusing on its key objective and why it was mainly established to ensure welfare for the Chinese people. And this is the main and key objective to achieve happiness and welfare for the people of China and to achieve development of the Chinese people to maintain the progress and purity of the party and this uh, uh, will, what will guarantee another 70 years for the party a party that has more than 90 million members the sixth pillar is uh, harboring the sense of responsibility for pursuing happiness of all mankind uh, as highlighted by uh, His Excellency Xi Jinping, uh, the CPC seeks to achieve uh, happiness uh, and prosperity for all mankind. Uh, it is working on making greater contribution to humanity. And uh, this is the main message. Since the 18th uh, plenary session of the CPC, the world witnessed unprecedented changes uh, for many centuries. That's why His Excellency Xi Jinping reminded us of what happened in the world and what uh, should we do and what kind of relations should uh, China establish uh, with the people in the new era and how should we build up those relations. Uh, he provided a, an answer, a comprehensive answer to this question uh, and uh, Xi Jinping thought on diplomacy has uh, 
five main pillars staying the path of peaceful development uh, uh, development that is based on respect and mutual progress and uh, uh, discarding the mentality of cold war and uh, the law of the jungle discarding the law of the jungle and focusing on uh, uh, mutual collaboration and fostering new thinking on security and uh, uh, forging a new form of international relations uh, that is based on uh, peace uh, building and uh, enhancing and boosting uh, international peace and linking the dreams and aspirations of china to the nation to the aspirations of other countries uh, to achieve uh, mutual prosperity and building a community with a shared future for mankind uh, and thereby achieve added value and great benefits and greater development for other nations. And thereby, this will empower the ability to achieve mutual and shared prosperity for all nations. The uh, following element uh, of the third point here, I will highlight uh, the fourth plenary session of the 19th CPC Central Committee. In the uh, 28th, 29th, 30th and 31st of October, last October, the political office of the uh, Central Committee of the CPC held its fourth plenary session of the 19th CPC Central Committee. As a member of the Central Committee, I attended uh, this uh, uh, plenary session, the 19th one. And I listened to the important speech given by the Secretary General of the party, Xi Jinping. This round of the fourth plenary session looked into the work report which is submitted by Xi Jinping, the Secretary General, who is charged to accomplish this report by the political party. And the political party praised the work of the Central Com Committee since the third committee of the 19th uh, plenary session. And it approved the decision of the Central Committee with a number of issues that have to do with uh, the integrity and uh, boosting the uh, uh, Chinese uh, socialist uh, approach uh, and enhancing uh, the governance system uh, and the ability for uh, governance. This uh, session, uh, the fourth one, is an important one. It was held at a highly decisive historical moment. China now is living at a crossroad of uh, the millennia. So at the level of uh, the international uh, development. Uh, international development is facing massive challenges that it has not faced in 100 years. The external environment of China is even more complex. And at the internal, internal level, China lives uh, a decisive moment uh, for uh, achieving the great progress and rising of the Chinese nation and building prosperity in a comprehensive manner. This year uh, coincides with the 70th anniversary of uh, New China. And uh, at this highly important moment of history, our party needs to summarize these experiences and plan for the future. And uh, on the backdrop of these developments, we held the fourth uh, plenary session of the 19th Central uh, Party Committees. Oh, and this, it has a very strategic perspective. The objective uh, uh, and the topics uh, highlighted in this plenary session is very important. Uh, we will dedicate an entire round of the Central, Central Committee to study the political system and the governance system of a country. Of the country where an important decision was made. This is the first time in the history of uh, our party. Discipline is a critical element for the prosperity and stability of China. The integrity and uh, boosting the uh, Chinese socialism is very important and uh, enhancing governance and the ability of governance are very important aspects uh, that have to do with the uh, social prosperity and social stability and the happiness of the people. The CPC decided to hold this conference uh, under this major title for political reasons and strategic reasons as well. This is a highly important decision, a long-term one as well, as it embodies the spirit of, uh, 
upholding this historical responsibility for the Central Committee of the CPC, whose cornerstone is our comrade Shibizin. The political declaration of upholding the uh, Chinese socialism uh, is unwavering. And uh, it, it is based on political support for going further with the great rising and the great cause and the great dream of China. This session and, uh, achieved great achievements and it gains special importance and it accomplished the following uh, achievements. Uh, upholding and improving the system of socialism with China improved and uh, managed to achieve and deliver a number of outcomes. The first of which is approval of the Central Committee of the major issues that have to do with upholding the uh, system of socialism with Chinese characteristics and modernization of China's system and capacity of gov uh, for governance. Uh, and uh, the most important contribution in this regard is that it answered an important political question, which is uh, what is the system that China should continue to uphold and uh, address uh, and continue to boost. Moreover, our party in that, in that session focused on enhancing the uh, system of governance and focusing on governance as a critical element for the success of the party. Secondly, summarizing 13 uh, key characteristics of uh, the socialism with Chinese characteristics and Chinese system for governance uh, with 13 aspects. Uh, first, upholding the central, centralized and unified leadership of the CPC uh, in a, and uh, focusing on uh, ensuring political stability and seeing that the, pe the country continues to move in a socialist manner. Secondly, seeing that the people run the country in uh, uh, popular democracy and uh, in uh, ensuring uh, close, close ties and collaboration with the public of China and the, the masses of China, ensuring uh, uh, that we boost the development and progress. The third pillar, ensuring law-based governance in all fields, uh, uh, a socialist country that, is, that has respect for the rule of law and achieving social justice uh, and protection of people's rights. The fourth pillar or aspect, ensuring that the whole country works together as a single chessboard and mobilization of all the uh, entities to focus uh, uh, on the key and primary resources. The fifth aspect, upholding equality between all ethnic groups and uh, ensuring that the Chinese nation is uh, the way of uh, joint destiny of the nation and achieving uh, mutual uh, prosperity. Number six point, uh, the sixth aspect, upholding the dominant role of the public sector and common development of economic entities under diverse forms of ownership and distribution system, whereby distribution according to labor is dominant. And a variety of other modes of distribution exist alongside it. Uh, and integrating a communist and uh, uh, a communist economic system and uh, liberating the production market and the production forces uh, and social forces. Uh, number seven, upholding common ideals and convictions, values and moral standards that are joint and common among the Chinese people and boosting the outstanding Chinese cul traditional culture and a revolutionary culture and an advanced social, uh, socialist culture and enhancing uh, social collaboration uh, between all the people of uh, uh, China ideologically and spiritually. The eighth is aspect adhering to the vision of people-centered development uh, and uh, continuing to enhance and improve uh, the welfare of uh, the Chinese people and uh, moving on the path of joint welfare. Number nine, the ninth aspect, continuing Reform and innovation moving with the times. And working on boosting and enhancing and making the society and ensuring that the society enjoys vitality and dynamism and upholding the values and the principles 
of integrating ethics and efficiency and selecting the best and the most talented individuals from all over the world to boost progress and development in China through outstanding human capital. Number 10, selecting officials based on integrity and ability and base of merit. And number 11, keeping the armed forces under the party's command to ensure sovereignty and uh, development benefits for the people of China. Number 12, number 12, upholding the principle of one country, two systems to maintain prosperity in a long-term manner in Hong Kong and Macau <coughs> and unifying with the uh, process of and boosting the process of unifying the homeland in a peaceful manner. Number 13, <coughs> adhering to the unity <coughs> of independence and self-reliance and opening up to the rest of the world and uh, actively contributing to international governance and boosting uh, the process of uh, boosting uh, and enhancing the joint welfare of the human race. These are the 13 aspects uh, or characteristics uh, that we focused on uh, which uh, boosted uh, the roadway and the roadmap for, for the success of China and they also represent the cornerstone of uh, in gaining the Chinese people's trust and uh, an important theory for uh, the socialism with the Chinese characteristics and Chinese system of governance and the socialist uh, culture that has Chinese characteristics. Moreover, these characteristics provide a sustainable uh, insurance for achieving the great progress for the Chinese people. And uh, China is giving trust to achieve the wisdom of China and the People's uh, uh, Republic of China's wisdom to the entire international community. The third point, we have uh, decided to build this, the general system of our country uh, in this session and uh, uh, this means that we boost and enhance the social system and enhance the process of governance in a sustainable manner to achieve further achievements uh, in all fields and be more mature uh, uh, for our uh, uh, party and ensuring that the different systems are more complete and more mature uh, and ensuring the proper governance system uh, by the year 2035 uh, and uh, updating the governance system in a comprehensive manner to achieve comprehensive development uh, by the year, the, by the, annual, the 100th anniversary for the achievement of uh, the uh, uh, new and modern China. Uh, the following point is determining three key t 13 key tasks for boosting the development and progress uh, of China and building an entire system of governance. Uh, this session determined those 13 key tasks which uh, have to do with upholding the system under uh, the and boosting and enhancing the governance system uh, uh, under the leadership of the CPC and that uh, the uh, people of China are the ones who rule China and uh, the, rule of chi the rule of law and enhancing the uh, communist uh, management of uh, uh, Chinese, Chinese economy and culture and advanced culture system and enhancing welfare for the people and uh, the social management uh, system and uh, the ecological uh, culture uh, system in addition to the uh, absolute leadership uh, 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 approach uh, and uh, the management of a national army, all of these pillars uh, and tasks. And uh, in summary, this uh, was an important uh, session for the history of the CPC and uh, this will have a major impact and a long-term impact on the future of China. With the uh, charging of the Central Committee uh, of the CPC, I presided the first delegation 
of the UAE for the, the CPC uh, uh, to visit the United Arab Emirates and this reflects how important it is for China to develop bilateral relations and to enhance mutual uh, political trust and benefit uh, uh, from exchanging ideas uh, with the United Arab Emirates. The United Arab Emirates has many successful governance experiences also and has a great deal of expertise. The Chinese uh, uh, people and the, uh, the CPC uh, focuses uh, uh, extensively on learning from uh, uh, the UAE and exchanging ideas so we can progress to achieve more prosperity together and uh, achieve further uh, achievements in development uh, uh, despite uh, the fact that uh, there is a major distance that separates China and the UAE and the different political systems we have yet we have many common characteristics our party has pinpointed a number of development aspects for uh, uh, which have to do with uh, uh, working on prosperity, uh, uh, boosting and a protecting environment, and uh, this, these are very, very similar to the concepts uh, which are equally tolerant and uh, focused on uh, helping the people and achieving people's welfare. Both countries, China and the UAE, have pinpointed the major objective and vision is to achieve prosperity for the people. And on the uh, 100 anniversaries for the, uh, the establishment of uh, China, we will work uh, relentlessly to build a communist country that is rich and powerful and democratic and advanced and uh, homogeneous and beautiful. The UAE uh, has its own uh, centennial plan uh, for the year 2071 uh, uh, to uh, establish uh, uh, the UAE to be the best country in the world. Uh, both peoples are working diligently and they exert great efforts uh, in their work. Uh, as was highlighted by uh, President Xi Jinping, the Chinese people realized since long, very time, that uh, for a very long time, that uh, no achievements can come. Uh, easily. So if we want to live happily, we have to work hard to achieve this happiness. The uh, president of the UAE said that uh, we must exert our efforts to ensure people's happiness. This year coincides with the 35th anniversary for the start of uh, the diplomatic relations between China and the United Arab Emirates. 30, over the past 35 years, uh, the exchange of ideas and collaboration between uh, both countries is expanding and deepening all the time. And there has been development at all levels. Uh, and the quality of bilateral relations has been outstanding. The UAE has become a very important country for uh, collaboration with uh, China uh, in the pragmatic and practical aspect in terms of uh, breadth and depth of collaboration and many achievements have been have been made Le last year his uh, excellency the president Xi Jinping visited the UAE where both sides uh, declared a strategic a full and comprehensive strategic partnership and turned a new leaf for the Emirati Chinese relations a short time ago his highness uh, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi visited China and gave the Chinese Emirati relationship a new momentum. And we believe that mutual collaboration between China and the UAE is a mission that has to receive massive attention for the next 100 years. I want to stress that the Chinese people pay special attention to expanding and enhancing the relations with the United Arab Emirates and working collaboratively with the UAE to ensure that we boost the great progress and uh, cooperation between the leaderships of the country to enhance exchanging ideas and learning lessons on both sides and enhance the strategic collaboration and activate cooperation in the, within the framework of the built the Built and Road Initiative to enhance uh, strategic relationships between the UAE and China. I wish uh, both peoples uh, happiness uh, and prosperity and the ability to work together to achieve further collaboration to uh, achieve success and prosperity for both countries. And uh, thank you very much and thank you very much for listening.
If you have any questions or interventions or comments, please feel free to express them. Would like to thank uh, His Excellency. Would like to thank His Excellency Hu Hu Ping for uh, this uh, wonderful speech. Thank you, Excellency, for this presentation. Currently, we have uh, learned, uh, heard a lot about the Built-in Road Initiative. Can you give us uh, an overview of uh, the role of the UAE in the Built-in Road Initiative in the future? 演讲，嗯，那么您在演讲当中呢，也是多次提到了“一带一路”倡议，所以我的问题就是，您认为阿联酋在未来在“一带一路”倡议当中能够发挥什么样的作用？“一带一路”倡议啊，呃，是呃中
。那么我们呢，呃，也致力于这个扩大对外开放，推进“一带一路”建设。而我们省呢，在历史上呢，呃，曾经就是中国对外开放的窗口。呃，我们现在都说丝绸之路。呃，我们省的这个省会城市西安，过去叫长安，就是丝绸之路的起点。两千多年前啊，这个在中国唐朝的时，在汉朝的时候，唐朝的时候呢，就开展了这个东西方这种贸易的，呃呃，这个呃，开展了贸易，也开展了文化方面的这些交流。那么我们是个对外开放的窗口，所以对我们陕西来说呢，现在也是大力发展枢纽经济、门户经济、流动经济，加强同世界各国的交往。我们也特别重视同阿联酋的联系。那么，我们今年的八月二十八号开通了我们陕西省会城市西安和这个呃迪拜的这个直航，这是客运的直航。我们下一步还在商讨啊，进一步的推动呃这个呃货这个货货运的这个直航的开通。另外呢，我们和阿联酋的联系也越来越多。今天上午啊，这个我们还在这个迪拜啊。呃，这个我们陕西省的一家公司，建筑公司啊，和呃这个三家呃这个我们在阿联酋开展工作的公司啊，呃这个单位呢签订了协议。另外，明天上午啊，我们还要开展这个呃这个合作交流、产业对接的这个推介会。呃，我们和这个拿我们陕西省来说，也和阿联酋的联系也越来越密切，各方面的交流也越来越多。这个未来呢，我们呃合作的可能性还很大。这个比如说，我们今今天上午啊，到这个迪拜经济发展局，呃，也商讨了下一步这个呃签署谅解合作备忘录的有关事宜。呃，另外呢，我们企业间的交流、产业的合作，另外呢，这个文化呀、旅游啊、经贸啊等等各方面的合作啊，现在都在大力推进。这些。说明啊，这个“一带一路”战略啊，“一带一路”这个倡议啊，呃，确实推动了呃我们陕西、中国、陕西和世界各国的交流和合作。而在这中间，阿联酋呢是一个非常重要的国家，我们也非常重视和和阿联酋啊开展合作和交流。China is a country that spends a massive Distance uh, and uh, covers a huge area and has uh, a huge uh, uh, population uh, and a massive market. For example, Shanxi Province's uh, uh, total area is 205,000 uh, square kilometers uh, and uh, the population is uh, 38.6 million people. Shanxi Province is located. In the heart of uh, China, it is uh, a doorway to the uh, China's uh, relations, uh, uh, external relations, and uh, has played a key role in China's external relations. And the capital of uh, Jiangxi is Ria, and it used to, to, to be called Shenzhen City, which is the uh, starting point for the old Belt and Road Initiative, uh, or Belt and Road, or the old Silk Road uh, uh, Way, which was. Uh, uh, the main doorway for uh, economic and uh, cultural uh, exchange uh, between the nations before. Uh, now, uh, Shanxi province uh, is uh, working diligently on utilizing its outstanding geographic location in the heart of China to boost collaboration with all the countries of the world, uh, including the United Arab Emirates. Uh, and uh, in August, uh, particularly on the 28th of August, uh, uh, last August uh, in this year, 2019, uh, we started a direct flight between uh, Xi'an and Dubai. It's uh, a passenger uh, uh, airline flight uh, and uh, in the upcoming period uh, we will uh, uh, have a uh, similar uh, uh, airline uh, established for, or let's say, uh, uh, flights for uh, uh, carrying uh, uh, goods. And the Shenzhen uh, Building and Construction Company will be collaborating with a number of uh, MRT companies uh, for uh, designated uh, uh, projects. And tomorrow morning in Dubai, we will have uh, the uh, 
Economic and uh, uh, Commercial Collaboration Forum uh, between China and the UAE. And therefore, the cooperation between Shanxi and the UAE is very important. Uh, and they have great horizons uh, for cooperation. This morning, we uh, had a meeting uh, with the Director General of the D Department of Economic Development in Dubai. And we looked into uh, the ability to uh, sign an MOU between Shanxi and Dubai to boost cooperation in uh, 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 SME's uh, domain and culture and tourism and trade. And this shows that the Built and Road Initiative uh, will play a major role and an important role in boosting collaboration between Shenzhen and all the countries of the world. And Shenzhen has great intention to boost cooperation with the UAE. We'll take uh, one more question or intervention, please. It really attracted my attention during your speech and your lecture. You used the term that the Communist Party is the only party that is capable of ruling China. Does this mean that this is almost a kind of communist royal uh, uh, regime? Uh, this is my first, uh, uh, my first question. My second question, how did you manage to uh, use Adam Smith and Ricardo's uh, communist uh, ideas uh, uh, within the scope of, uh, of uh, Karl Marx's uh, communist ideas. 您的演讲当中您提到只有中国共产党能够领导中国那么这是否能够称为是一种政党君主制还有一个问题呢就是关于中国是一个马克思主义政党那么它是如何来消除这个资本主义思想在党内的影响和在中国社会的影响的这个中国是中国共产党领导的这个我们中国共产党成立九十八年这个执政已经七十年这个中国共产党的领导啊是中国啊发生了翻天覆地的变化那么在中国由共产党领导啊是历史的选择是人民的选择这个事实上啊在中国近代啊也尝试了各种不同的这个方式因为中国过去也是封建社会啊这个最后一个
With regards to the first question, uh, the uh, CPC was established uh, almost 98 years ago and uh, with its uh, rise to power in China almost 70 years ago under the leadership of uh, the Communist uh, uh, Party of China we can see that uh, China made great progress and it was made as uh, a major decision and a choice that the people of China sided with and uh, China tried many political systems before including uh, constitutional monarchy and uh, the parliamentary system and uh, a presidential system yet all of these regimes and systems failed in China until the year 1921. On that particular year, the Chinese Communist Party was established. And then the uh, Communist Party of China, CPC, led the way in China for happiness and prosperity and uh, welfare of the people of China. And in the year 1949, the CPC led the, the, the Chinese people to establish new China. That is why we say that history and the people of China are the ones who selected the CPC. That then the CPC succeeded in leading the Chinese people to establish a communist system with Chinese characteristics. The leadership of the CPC has a key characteristic and its most outstanding characteristic is that it is a communist system with Chinese characteristics. History and the achievements made by uh, the uh, CPC throughout the years show that the leadership of uh, the CPC and the ruling of uh, the CPC of China receives massive support from the public. 建设问题从中国的实际经历结合那么在战争年代和建设时期我们把马克思主义的基本原理和中国革命和建设的实际结合起来我们诞生了毛泽东思想那么在毛泽东思想的指引下我们取得了战争解放战争的抗日战争解放战争的
practical and pragmatic circumstances of China. For example, um, at the time of the Chinese Revolution, the CPC integrated the central theory with the uh, actual circumstances of China. And uh, this process uh, resulted in uh, shaping Mao Zedong uh, uh, concepts back then. Uh, and uh, under the guidance of that concept, uh, the uh, CPC won the China Liberation War. And the war against the uh, Japanese invasion. And uh, the new China was established successfully. Afterwards, the uh, CPC uh, began to be highly creative with the, uh, this uh, theory which, uh, in which we saw many new ideas and concepts and achievements were developed including Xi Jinping uh, uh, socialism with the Chinese characteristics in the new age and the, on the, in the 19th uh, session of uh, the uh, CPC these concepts and ideas uh, were adopted as guidelines uh, for the CPC and those uh, uh, ideas were enlisted and uh, uh, added to the uh, uh, Chinese constitution. That's why those concepts of President Xi Jinping, uh, Xi Jinping uh, has to do with this central approach in the modern and new age. And under the guidance of these uh, uh, concepts, China will move from one victory to another. Yeah, 刚才说到了中国共产党的领导，那么我们这次召开的十九届四中全会，从制度上来讨论党的建设，实际上这个制度里头啊，最重要的一条制度就是坚持党的领导。在我们的整个的领导体系里头，这是最重要的。所以党对
the key objective of uh, the establishment of uh, the uh, CPC and uh, thereby we have launched a uh, campaign for raising awareness uh, through the uh, support of uh, the Secretary General of the CPC, Xi Jinping, to uh, boost uh, upholding the Marxist uh, concepts and ideas uh, and the key objective of, uh, and I stress here, the key objective and the key message of our party is to achieve happiness for the Chinese people and achieve the great progress for the Chinese people. This uh, uh, campaign is another important step uh, for boosting the success of our party. Uh, at the intellectual and party and uh, uh, political structure, the political and uh, intellectual part of uh, the structure is very important. Thank you very much. Uh, we will take no further questions. And at the end of this lecture, once again, on behalf of uh, His Excellency uh, Dr. Jamal Sanad Swedi, Director General of uh, ECSSR, we would like to express our appreciation for His Excellency Hugh Hoping, and would like to thank all of you, ladies and gentlemen, and we hope to meet you in an upcoming lecture. Thank you, and peace be with all of you.